ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ونبيه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا وسيدنا وقرة اعيننا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وخلفائه الراشدين ابو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وسائر الصحابه وامهات المؤمنين ومنا معهم يا ارحم الراحمين ما بعد اخواني واخواتي في الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته we are talking about the medina period المرحله المدنيه لسيره النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and just recapping he arrived in medina at the age of 53 صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه and with it few things happened in the first year the qibla changed as well as salah changed and sallallahu alaihi wasallam built his masjid um, in the middle of medina and we will see that in year two uh, for the first time uh, ramadan will be basically become ob- obligatory and rasulullah will uh, fast uh, in year two year two zakah as well became obligatory um, in year two and they actually give has been given the, the muslims and rasulullah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them permission to fight as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah الحاج why because لأنهم يقاتلون قريش basically uh, took that aggressive approach to Rasulullah sallallahu and his companion which led many of his companions left from Mecca to Africa and others now in Medina as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said once this ummah established itself on the land what Ummah Muhammad is all about as salah or zakah and guiding people to do the right thing and not to go and oppress and commit injustice against any of either the tribes or mankind we did talk about the ghazawat al nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we started as well with the some of the expedition that happened in year 2 and we said that the first battle rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam participated in was al abwa uh, all these battles in front of you and expedition nothing came out meaning no no one was killed from either party so as we said last week yes we have 27 ghazwa uh, and 336 uh, expedition but the total number of people who killed all through these battles and expeditions from the kuffar around 1200 from the muslims less than 270 so it's not a big number of people were killed but we will see why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, led all these battles and ghazawat the most important sharia that took place in year two and this is right before the battle of badr is a sharia called sharia nakhla and if you look at the map, Nakhla actually in uh, very close to Mecca, Sharrafah Allah. This is where Nakhla is. So they came all the way from Medina with the orders of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go to that place and monitor the caravans of Quraysh as an eye to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what's happening around that. This Sariya, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it to uh, companions, Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu an, from Al Muhajirin. All the battles and expeditions participated only by, by the people from Mecca, Muhajirin. No Ansar uh, yet. 
Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiyallahu anhu arda took orders from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a letter. Don't open the letter until you basically go with those with you for two days and then open the letter, make sure you understand it and then uh, discuss it with the companions that you have. Abdullah ibn Jahsh with him, he took eight. After two days, he opened the letter. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that letter, letter ordered him to go to Nakhla and monitor Quraysh and give him some news about what's happening in Quraysh. And in the letter as well, he said, do not compel any of the companions to participate. If anyone wants to go back, it's basically their choice. All of them said, yes, we will be with you, Ya Abdullah. Now, two of those who were in the uh, eight Sariya, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu wa arda wa Udba ibn Ghazwan, they took, both of them, they were looking after a camel. That camel actually just ran away and they followed the camel and they got lost. They ended up six people all together. As they were waiting in Nakhla, that position, a caravan of Quraysh came. What do we do? He consulted Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu an. The reason for consultation is that this caravan came in Rajab. And Rajab is part of the four forbidden months. Rajab, Zul Qa'da, Zul Hijjah, and Muharram. It happened in Rajab. Now there is a little bit of different views from the scholars written about this expedition. The reason for that, some said that Abdullah ibn Jahsh made a mistake. He thought that Sha'ban came in, Rajab Sha'ban, so, which means he's allowed to fight. Others said no, he actually looked and made the decision on the spot. If we leave them, Mecca is very close when you looked at the map. They will be basically flee. And he discussed it with the companions and they said let's attack. And that's exactly what they did. They attacked the caravan, surprise, and they managed to kill one kafir, the first kafir to be killed in Islam, Amr ibn al-Hadrami, and they captured two kuffar, al-Hakam ibn Qaysan, wa Uthman ibn Abdullah. Six people, they managed to take the caravan as a booty, and now they went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasulullah was angry with them. How dare you fight in the forbidden months? Wallahi ya Rasulullah, we didn't know. We thought that Cha'ban is already entered. Rasulullah rejected that argument and he was angry with them. Quraysh, straight away the propaganda machine came out. Muhammad وسلم, allows his companions to fight in the forbidden months. Rasulullah said, no, this is a mistake. That's not right. It was a mistake. Okay, well, give us the prisoners. Al-Hakam wa Uthman. He said, no. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas and Udba ibn Ghazwan still lost. And Rasulullah was worried that Quraysh captured them. So he said, when they arrive, I will release those prisoners and of course all the booty with them. Sa'd radiallahu anhu arda managed with Udba to came back and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa released the two prisoners. Al-Hakam ibn Kaysan in, during that time he was sitting down in the masjid watching those people. What are they doing? How they actually talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa How they behave? Totally different world. Eye opening for them. He became a Muslim. Radiallahu anhu arda, and he stayed in Medina. But Osman ibn, Abd ibn Abdullah went back and he died as a kafir. Subhanallah. Tahdi man ahbat. This hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, this incident or this expedition Allah mentioned uh, in details about.
Al-Baqarah, Yas'alunaka ya Muhammad on the Shahr al-Haram, the forbidden months. Qitalun fi, are we allowed to fight? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qitalun fihi kabir. No, this is a major sin. We're not allowed to fight in these months. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went further and he said, What about Quraysh, who basically oppressed the Muslim and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and compelled them to leave Al-Masjid al-Haram. So they are actually coming with excuse, but what they have done even worse to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companion. So here basically, uh, Sarit Nakhla was mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that yes, we do respect the forbidden months, we're not allowed, allowed to fight in those now the fighting at the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you are allowed to fight those who are killing you but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the fighting to the next so here we are giving the green light to fight and we have the right to fight. But at the same time, it was not allowed for us to oppress or to uh, lead or use that jihad or fighting to oppress other people. And this is basically coming Ghazwa al-Badr. Ghazwa, as we said, means Rasulullah sallallahu led the battle. Now, those very first ayat, in Surah Al-Anfal is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in ayah number five. So who actually led Rasulullah into this battle altogether? Allah. Akhraja Rabbuka min baytika bil haq. Not him and not the companions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will see that in this battle, it's all planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the time that Rasulullah left until the end of the battle. And that's very important for us. Now, when we talk about battles, especially the major one, we'll explain the reason for the battle, what happened before and during and after. And in between, we'll be basically reflecting that in the Quran. And this is actually the relationship between the seerah of Rasulullah and the Quran. Battle of Badr will explain in Surah Al-Anfal, the booty. And if you understand Battle of Badr, inshallah, that will help you to understand Al-Anfal and memorize it, inshallah, and put some sort of um, content to what you're actually trying to read. Battle of Badr uh, happened in year two. Rasulullah was 55 years of age. In the month of Ramadan, so this month they will be fasting. This is the first year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered the Muslim to fast. And Rasulullah did and the companions fasted as well. It happened on Friday, so you can imagine with me, Rasulullah standing up and giving khutbah before the battle, Allah Musta'an, and urging everyone to basically participate for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and stop those kuffar from attacking them. Friday, and the location is 160 k's south of Medina, Sharafah Allah, Badr. Some of the scholars said it's the name of a will, others said a name of a man. Either way, uh, you will see that the battles of Rasulullah or the expeditions that he sent, they do have that type of name like Uhud, it's a name of a mountain. Uh, Al Khandaq or Al Ahzab, it's the trenches, and Al Ahzab is the coalition of the Kuffar. Uh, Tabuk, which is a city in Jordan today. And that's how, basically, the names of these battles uh, comes around um, cities, uh, people's names, and so forth. The reason, basically, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
received the news that Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu arda is coming from the north, from Bladi Sham with a caravan, but a very special caravan. What's so special about it? Every rich and honorable man in Mecca participated with their money in this caravan, meaning it will affect almost everyone. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning. It has a major effect on Quraysh. 1,000 camels with 40,000 gold dinars. Only 30 to 40 men as security or guards. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions, هذه عير Quraysh. This is the caravan of Quraysh. فيها أمواالهم with their wealth. Remember, he's only targeting Quraysh. He's not targeting anyone, only Quraysh. And we now know the reason. The 13 years that he وسلم, went through with Quraysh and his companions, now it's time to stop them and to get them under that control and the attack on his mission. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَأَخْرِجُوا إِلَيْهَا لَعَلَّ اللَّهُ يَمْفِلْكُمُوهَا Let's, so here there's no jihad. It's basically, there's a caravan, let's go out. There's no war. Let's go and intercept this caravan. But it ended up a major battle. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Anfal, يوم الفرقان يوم التقى الجمعان فئة تقاتل في سبيل الله وأخرى كافرة What happens? رؤية عاتكة بنت عبد المطلب عاتكة رضي الله عنها became a Muslim one of the aunties of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم See, she saw a dream a dream that disturbed her she made that dream made her worried what did she saw? رضي الله عنها she said and she shared that dream with her brother العباس she said I saw a man coming to Mecca and he went over the mountain and he started with a very loud voice Ya ala ghadrin qumu ila masari'akum fi thalas all of you who are committing injustice wake up to your death in three and then he left that mountain and he went to the Kaaba and he repeated the same statements and he left the Kaaba and he went to the mountain of Abu Qubais behind the Kaaba and he said the three things and when he finished he took a rock and he threw it and this rock actually went into pieces and entered every and each house of the Meccans she wake up and she went to her brother Al-Abbas radiallahu anhu wa arda. And she told him about her dream. Al-Abbas said, don't tell anyone. She said, yes. Al-Abbas himself, he went and told his friend, Al-Walid ibn Udba. And Al-Walid went to his father and he told his father, Udba. Everybody knew about the dream. One day, Al-Abbas was making tawaf. Abu Jahl, of course, the head of Quraysh, Amr ibn al-Hakam, knew about the dream. And he looked. Ya Abu al-Fadl, when you finish your tawaf, we want to talk to you. Al-Abbas said, yes. He went over and Abu Jahl, alayhi min Allah ma yastahaq. He said, Ya Bani Abd al-Muttalib, kathra fikum al-anbiya. What's happening with you? You've got too many prophets now and messengers. Abbas said, what do you mean? He said, Isn't it enough for you men to be prophets? Now we hear that your women as well are becoming prophets. Abbas said, I don't understand. What are you trying to say? He said, Ru'ya, Atika. Abbas learned that everybody now knows about it. But trying to deny it to no avail. Abu Jahl, alayhi min Allah ma yastahaq, he said, 
We will wait for three days. But wallahi, if nothing happens in those three days, we will call you, Bani Abdul Muttalib, the liars. And all of the Arabs will get to know about it. Al-Abbas left. But the women of Bani Hashim surrounded Al-Abbas. How dare this man tells you and have a go at you? So Al-Abbas in his mind said, well, I'll deal with him. Leave him to me. Let's leave this for a minute and we move on with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the battle. We'll come back to the dream of Atika later on. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is now leaving Medina, Allah, and with him he took from Al Ansar 231 Al Muhajirin 86. Al Ansar majority 61 from Al Aws, Al Khazraj 170. Now, why Al Khazraj 170? About two or three times than Al Aws? Because Al Aws homes in Medina, in the north of Medina. Al Khazraj lived in the south. So it was easier for them. And Rasulullah didn't ask or make an order or make it compelling for people you have to participate because they are not going for a battle. So whoever is ready, he will join. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 86 Muhajireen, 231 from Al-Ansar. That brings to some of the scholars said 314, 315, 16, 17, and so forth. As part of his sunnah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left Abdullah ibn Maktoum. Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma. Abdullah ibn Maktoum radiallahu anhu he left him as Amir in Medina. He gave the flag of Al-Muhajireen to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Al-Ansar Sa'd ibn Mu'az took their flag and on the left hand side actually in this sort of um, group let's say it's not, it's not shaping as a battle yet we have two horses, one for Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu arda, and the other one, al-Miqdad ibn Amr. So as Zubair was on the right hand side, and on the left was al-Miqdad ibn Amr. A hundred, uh, three hundred and thirteen or fourteen of the companions. The majority you can see are from al-Muhajireen, uh, from al-Ansar. This is basically how this map is going to look. The armies of the Muslims will be around 300 and teens. Quraysh will come with 1300, but that number will go down to 1000. Some said 900, we'll see why. Two horses for the Muslims, 60 from Quraysh, camels 70. And from Quraysh, the scholars didn't uh, put any numbers, meaning that they have so many, not only to ride, but as well to slaughter. Um, the camels of the Muslims, as we said, it's 160 miles from Medina to Badr. So if you do a, a quick sort of division multiplication between 70 and 314 or 13, that means every three will have one camel. Every three will have to share one camel. Rasulullah himself had to share the camel with Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda, and Marthad ibn Abi Marthad. Now these two are young boys, early 20. Rasulullah sallallahu 55 years of age. And this is the leadership of the man. He is not asking for any special treatment. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam basically shared with Ali and Marsad ibn Abi Marsad radiallahu anhum, they said, Ya Rasulullah, you stay in the camel. And that's what you would do. Man, 55 years of age, head of the army, he is the prophet and the messenger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his answer? And his answer is basically, remember, these companions will go and conquer the whole world. And the same approach they will take is what they are actually learning
from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did he say sallallahu alaihi wasallam? He said, "You are not stronger than me." Ma bi aqwa minni. And then he said something which is quite interesting. I'm in need of the reward as much as you do. Allahu Akbar. Allah forgave all his future and past sins. But he said, I am in need in the reward. Meaning, we will have to take turns. And that is exactly what happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab when he entered Palestine, radiallahu anhu. Who was with him? He had with him one of his free slaves, and they took turns from Medina all the way to Palestine. He learned, where did he get these skills from? Where did he learn from? From the teacher, from his teacher, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was Khalifa, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name, Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda, was will throw fears in the Persian Empire and in the Roman Empires. His name, he was the only superpower in the world. Radiallahu anhu arda. He had basically the most strongest army that you can think of. Defeating the Romans, defeating the Persians and actually putting an end to them and going into Asia. With that, radiallahu anhu arda, he took turn with his free slaves. They couldn't believe it when he entered Palestine. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught them this quality. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this battle 14 of the Muslims were killed, 70 from the kuffar were killed. The Muslims as we will see they took 70 prisoners. Now the main objective for this battle, as we are going to call it battle soon, is to go and intercept the caravan of Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu arda. Rasulullah sallallahu doesn't know where this caravan is, so he has to send his eyes to get some news. So he sent Busbus ibn Amr wa Uday ibn Abi Zaghba radiallahu anhuma. Go and find out, try to track down this caravan. They did. They went out all the way to Badr. They took their camel, put it down, and they sat. They saw two girls talking to each other. Give me my money. Wait, when the caravan comes, we'll do the business and I'll give you your money. So they said, well, looks like this is the place that they will come. So they went to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, we went to that place and they shared with him what they heard from the girls. At the same time, Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu arda, he's not an easy man. He actually came to the very same place as these two girls said. They found an old man sitting down. He's worried. His eyes are open, just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Have you seen anyone? He said, no. Except two men came with their camel and they sat there. They sat over there for a while and then left. Yes. Abu Sufyan went over and he looked and he found camel's drops. So he took the stick and took some, looked through it, and he found what we call, you know, when you eat dates, you have the seed. He found the seed of the dates. And those drops, he said, seeds, the eight dates. The only people that can afford feeding their animals dates are the people from Medina. Because they have so much plantations there with dates. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is somewhere. He started to take straight away a quick action. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. The first action, he sent Dumdum, Ibn Amr al-Ghaffari. He said, don't stop. Go and tell Quraysh that Muhammad has an army trying to intercept the caravan. Now remember, this caravan 
the honor, every honorable man of Quraysh had something in it. That man, Dandam ibn Amr al-Ghaffari, didn't stop exactly as Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu wa arda told him. But when he arrived in Mecca, he arrived in a bit of a drama situation here. He wants to get the attention. So what did he do? He basically, on his camel, he took his knife and he cut part of the neck of the camel. So blood came out. And he took that blood and he started to put it on his clothes and his face and on the camel too. So it looks like he's been attacked. Something is happening. So Quraysh was, everybody, what is this? What happened? And he's coming as basically envoy from the caravan. And what he did as well, when he entered, he started to scream, Al-Ghaus, Al-Ghaus, Al-Latim, al Help, help. al which is the caravan, the camels, were their wealth. Al-Ghaus, Al-Ghaus, what happened? Ya Dandam, he's not talking. But he kept going into Mecca with that blood and his clothes teared apart and people started to gather around him. Ya Dandam, tell us what happened? Al-Ghaus, Al-Ghaus, al al He's not giving them any answer until he went to the Kaaba. He got good audience now and he told them, maybe it's too late to stop Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking over from your wills and the caravan. Quraysh straight away went to that, into that mood of war. One, because of their wills, but two, that's the chance, opportunity that they were waiting for. Now we actually can go and finish him off. Let's do it. He's giving us a chance and we will take it. So Quraysh started to mobilize its forces. Of course, Abu Jahl, the head of Quraysh, made sure that everyone will participate. The only one who couldn't actually go to fight was Abu Lahab. He was sick. He said to one of the honorable men, he has to have another one, honorable like him, you go and fight for me and I will pay your debt. He said yes. So Abu Lahab didn't go. Abbas went. Aqil ibn Abi Talib went. Um, we will talk about some of the sons of the companions. Umar ibn al-Khattab went. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, who was a kafir, as well he went. So there is major contingents from Quraysh now heading down to the north. Almost 1300, as we said, managed to um, mobilize in a very short period of time because that's exactly what they were waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and now it came. Let's go back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Things are totally started to change in that sort of um, very short period of time. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the news came to him and the, the wahi came to him that Quraysh is actually leaving with an army. Which means that small number of companions that he's got, he's got to fight with. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here again, the leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to play a major role. He's not dictating. And this is something that we need to understand. When he heard received the revelation that they are heading north with an army straight away he went into consultation mode what do we do he will do the same in Uhud he will do the same in Ahzab these are major battles Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what do we do Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda stood up and he said ya Rasulullah amdi lima amarak Allah do what Allah asks you to do. We are with you. Rasulullah was pleased and Abu Bakr sat down. Umar radiallahu anhu arda said very much the same word as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa arda. 
And then came Al-Maqdad ibn Amr radiallahu anhu wa He stood up and he said, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, we will fight with you. We are not going to say to you what Banu Israel said to Musa alayhi salam. Izhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna hauna qa'idun. Walakin izhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila nahnu ma'aka muqatilun. Wallahi ya Rasulullah, if you want to fight, fi birak al-ghamad will be with you. What does that mean? We know Musa alayhi salatu wa salam when he left Egypt, the slave, and the slavery behind him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the path to enter Palestine. Banu Israel defeated. Slavery inside, just like us today in the Muslim Ummah, we are defeated. There's a very similarity between Banu Israel and our Ummah in certain parts of our history. We're not going to fight here, Musa. You go and fight with your Lord, we will wait here for you when you come back. But Al Maqdad said, We are not going to say that to you, Ya Rasulullah. But rather, go and fight with your Lord and we will be with you. Even if you want to fight and take us all the way through Birak al-Ghimad. Birak al-Ghimad is a city outside Mecca. All the way down. Rasulullah was pleased. And he sat down. Ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas. Please, I need your advice. Why is he saying that? He's got Abu Bakr and Umar and Maqdad. And the three of them, just giving him, yes, we'll be with you. But those three, Muhajireen, <coughs> Al-Ansar, no one said anything. Well, Ansar is the majority, over 230 of them. Rasulullah Sallallahu when he signed the treaty, Ba'atul Aqaba, Al-Thaniya, with Al-Ansar, is to protect Rasulullah Sallallahu inside Medina. Now I am outside Medina. So he is worried that their interpretation that we are outside, we have no obligation to protect you. Sa'd ibn Mu'az radiallahu anhu ardah stood up and he said, as if you are pointing the finger to us, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes. What you've heard all, Muhajireen, now it's you. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu arda said, Ya Rasulullah, laqad amanna bik, we believed in you, fasaddaqnaak, and we believed in your message. Wa shahidna inna ma jitta bihi huwa al-haq. To far that what you brought to us with the truth. And we give you to hear and obey. As Allah asks you to do, we will be with you. If you want to cross that sea, the Red Sea, we will cross it with you. ما تخلف منا رجل واحد. All of us, no one will stay back. وما نكره أن نلقى عدونا. We're not afraid to meet our enemy. إن لا صبر في الحرب. We are very patient when it comes to war. يا رسول الله. صدق في اللقاء. When we meet them, we'll be firm and strong. ولا على الله يريك من يريك منا ما تقر به عينك. فسير بنا على بركة الله إن شاء الله الله سبحانه وتعالى will show you what will make you please from our side now يا رسول الله let's go رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was so pleased with the speech from سعد بن معاز one of the heads of Al Ansar and he made this statement سيروا وأبشروا let's go and I've got good news for you. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى وَعَدَنِي إِحْدَى الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ Allah promised me one of the two. One of the two, not shahada, no. Either the caravan or victory. The caravan or victory. وَلَكَ أَنِّي الْآنْ أَنْظُرْ إِلَى مَصَارِعِ الْقَوْمِ This is a miracle to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said to the companion, I can see where every and each one of those people will be killed. 
one of the companions said, I actually made sure that I will monitor that after the battle. And they were all died where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said exactly where they will be killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Surah Al-Anfal what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shared with the companion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning this battle and he promised to you one of the two the caravan of Abu Sufyan anhu arda, or victory but some of you they don't want to fight oh this is not good enough now the beautiful about the Quran here is actually intact this is our history no one can go and change it so here we started to see something about some of the companions they don't want to fight they want to have the caravan that's fine but when it comes to fighting they never disobeyed Allah or his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wanted this again Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started now to go into the mood of a battle so he sent Ali ibn Abi Talib was Zubair ibn al-Awwam was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas these are all young men go and find out more information they actually came back with two slaves prisoners and they put them in front of them who are you? we are from the army of Quraysh what? army? started to hit them you are from the caravan of Abu Sufyan Wallahi, we are not from Abu Sufyan. We are from the army of Quraysh. Quraysh. Rasulullah finished and he called the companions aside. He said, if he's telling you the truth, you hit him. And if he tells you the lies, you agree with him. And you leave him. Tell me, who are you? We are from the army of Quraysh. How many are they? We don't know. How many they slaughter a day? Between nine to ten camels. Rasulullah sallallahu said, there are 900 people around that. Who is with the army? Uh, Abu Jahl, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, Umayyah ibn Khalaf. This is now news. We've got the heads of Quraysh in this very important place. يَقُولُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ And then the next ayah is quite interesting. وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ They don't want to fight. They want the caravan. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us they are human. They are human. They don't have the numbers. They didn't go out for fight. And now it ended up with a major fight for them. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the Muslims and will lead them to the best possible way in this battle. First of all, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the uh, place where they landed very close to Badr and he said, we will camp here. Al-Habbab ibn al-Munzir radiallahu anhu arda said, Ya Rasulullah, is this something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked you to do it? He said, no. Is this something that you want us to do? He said, this is just the war and the tricks of war. He said, this is not a good place. He said, why? He said, Ya Rasulullah, we better for us to camp next to the wells. We have access to the water. They don't. Now, Remember as well, this man as leadership, and you've got to understand this, his quality of leadership. If the companions are afraid of him or are scared of him, they will just say, Sami'ana wa ta'ana, and it's finished. But first, they are very polite. Allah asked you to do this? No. Is this something that you want us to do? What? This is the war and the tricks. Well, that's not good enough. Let's move to that. And he accepts that. And this is quality of leadership. You need to listen, you need to consult, you need to communicate. If you are in the wrong, it doesn't take anything away from you. It actually puts you higher up. You're listening. 
Rasulullah sallallahu did exactly what Al-Habbab radiyallahu anhu wa said. Al-Ansar radiyallahu anhu wa arda, they loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They said, Ya Rasulullah, what's happening? We were not ready for it. Yes, what do you want to do? We would like to build for you a place at the end of the army. What do you want me to do that for? Ya Rasulullah, if anything happens, our brothers in Medina will protect you. You can leave. So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thanked them and made dua for them. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala now will start to look at the battlefields of the Muslim. In the ayat, and all these ayat from Surah Al-Anfal. Now if I have 300 plus against 1000 plus, they are ready with their weapons, they are ready going for a battle. We are not. We don't have the weapons, we don't have the numbers, and basically it's three to one. Very difficult for you to be able to go and have a rest or have a sleep. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put everyone in the Muslim army to sleep. Sleep gives you rest so you can restore your power, be able to fight. One of the companions said, I was the guard and I lost my spear nine times drifting. Is he nuas? Nuas is that when you get a train, not in a car, when you're on a train and you just drift. That's the five minutes that gives you the power for the rest of your trip. Is he nuas? Amanatan min. So you have this tranquility, you have that peace. Yes, we know that you're under a lot of pressure and fear is part of mankind's, but you're going to have that rest. Rain will come. Scholars said the rain that came in the Muslim side of the camp, it was not heavy rain. On the Kuffar side, it was heavy rain. Heavy rain on the sand makes it mud. Mud makes it difficult for them to walk. Light rain makes the sand a little bit easier to walk. So he's giving the Muslims basically advantage here, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah. Last thing that we will talk about quickly, we'll have a look at the Kafir camp because the Kuffar now arrived, but no one knows where the other camp is. They're still going north. Rasulullah camped in Badr, but he doesn't know exactly where the army of Quraysh. We'll get that back back to that, inshallah, next time. But here, as the Kuffar arrived very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu arda send a message, caravans is safe, you can go back now. Banu Zuhra, 300 of them. They said, well, our wealth is safe, we don't need to fight. We going back. Banu Hashim, the same, except for some of the leaders like Al-Abbas radiallahu anhu arda. He stayed. So Abu Jahl became very angry. He said, we shouldn't. We should stay. We should finish what we tried to start it. What do you want here, Abu Jahl? He said, let's make sure that all of Arabia heard about us. Let's drink. And let's have our dancers do what they have asked to do and then go and finish off what we started. But they had a problem. And this problem came just before they left. The Meccans had a problem with another tribe called Kanana. And the reason for that is revenge. Arabs used to kill each other like animals before. Kanana were waiting for these moments to attack Quraysh. 
But what happens, a shaitan alayhi min Allah ma yastahak, came in the shape and the look of one of the heads of Qanan, the, the um, tribe of Qanana. And he told them, don't worry. You can go and fight and I'll make sure that Kanana will not attack Quraysh. And this is as well mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal, وَإِزَّيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Of course, the shaitan wants to finish Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took part when they gathered to kill him in Mecca. And they listened. And he said, this is the best advice that Abu Jahla put forward. Young man to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like one man. Okay. Now, he doesn't want them to stop. زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ What you're doing is the right thing. وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمُ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ And I will basically make sure that Kanana will not attack Quraysh. But the ayat, as you can see, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will mention, فَلَمَّا تَرَأَتِ الْفِئَتَانِ نَكَسَ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ Because the shaitan can see the angels when they came down, what did he say? He said, I can see what you can't. I'm going. So he went with them, but of course he can see that there is no way that the kuffar will win. He saw the angels, so he had to back up and go. And this is exactly the way of the shaitan. Inshallah, next time when we meet, we'll have a look at the preparation for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, army and the exact place where both armies met and what happened during the battle and what Allah said as well to us in Surah Al-Anfal about the battle and what happened after the battle and the killing of 70 of Quraysh taken prisoners at 70 as well. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran, what should we do with them? And the decision and the consultation process that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with the companions about those prisoners. And then we will see how the news was received both in Mecca, Sharafah Allah, and in Medina. Because this is basically a major victory. And politically, it's a major victory for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. And of course, for Islam. For Islam as well. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.